Horde got the text message, Hunters are OP. There's like five, six, seven, eight of them, every BG. This one only has one. This is what happens when I get mad. Just watch, can of whoop ass coming. How's everybody doing? Luxley in Silver Shard Mines. I think this is like the first time I ever popped in here, did a video on it. Now I did did a couple others. I try to avoid this map because it tends to favor the horde, but I can't. Can't avoid it because if I don't block out the 240-man BGs, I'm waiting like 15 minutes for a battleground. So I have to play it. And it it's not as bad. It's not as bad as I, I as I had used to think it was or whatever, you know. It's pretty good. You know, you get to face only one hunter and his name is Noob, so that's kind of comforting to me as opposed to facing literally in a BG. I had seven hunters. I was like, oh my God, I gave it a shot. We just lost. And then I was like, all right, next one, eight hunters. And I have to say, the reality is hunters are pretty strong. And I'm speaking from experience, not speculation. I play a hunter. I played almost as much as I play my Shadow Priest. My channel was initially named after my hunter. I've done hunter videos. I plan to do them again. I do enjoy playing the class, and I can tell you, yes, they are pretty overpowered, especially when you face quite a few of them in a battleground, because, you know, it's like five hunters, you know, three stampedes coming at you, 12 pets, you know, a whole zoo of pets, and three barrages, and then it's just like, good luck, <laughs> you know, have fun with that, Lux, good, have fun, see how you can counter that, there's not much you can do. And they are pretty strong. So I just was had all this vent up frustration and anger because I couldn't do anything. My my efforts were kind of pedestrian. So now that I'm in a battleground where there's only one horde hunter, this is what I can do. I can just wreck people. Cause, you know, wrecking people is fun. It really is. You know, I'm not the kind of guy who's gonna, you know, teabag people, although I do have a macro. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna you know, create a level one dune and harass them after I kill them like five or six times in a battleground. I mean, like people do to me half the time. But, <laughs> I mean, I like your style, Mr. Warrior. That was his name, I like my style. I like his style. I like the style, I like his haircut. I like his axe, I like his, I like, I don't know, you see, I like him. I like, if he had a YouTube channel, I would go subscribe to him. I really would. I like your style. I do. Thanks for playing. Like your style. I like my style. That's his name. Good name. Okay, we're up uh, basically by 2 to 1 ratio. 469 to 340 something. There's like my style again. Trying to sneak in. Yeah, we see you, bro. You're not stealth. Oh, yeah, you can't go stealth. You're not a rogue. So now we're just going to dot him up. Thanks for playing. But the problem is, once you start liking one thing, then you gotta like Facebook, and you gotta like Twitter, and you gotta like Instagram, and then if the guy makes videos, you gotta like his videos. There's just so many things to like. So I'll just settle and like his style and call it quits right there. But we're up 340, 393 to 649 would be the right way to say it. And there's like my style again. And he's, of course, every time I click on a wire, he's got Berserker up, and he's got Whirly Bird up, and he's dead. Thanks for playing. I like your style, bro. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. But this is generally what happens when I only face one hunter and his name is Noob. Hey, Noob. Oh, he's got Devouring Plague on him. He's got problems. Oh, no, he doesn't. But I have it up. I gave it to somebody. I don't know who I gave it to. I can give it to you if you want. But I'm running with a little bit of a different build here. Um, just simply because things have changed in patch 6.1 and there will be a video coming up to explain what I'm doing. Uh, the burst is not quite the same, but the overall damage is top in the charts um, and pretty darn good. Uh, just simply because you'll find out. I'll put together the video. It's in progress. You'll see it. It's really cool. Oh, dead warrior. There's a feral. This feral is a cool guy. He's helped me out a little bit. Every single time I seem to be a little bit trained by melee, he shows up. Hey, superiors! That's his name with a lot of Z's. Her name. It's probably a dude. Every time... I mean, when you see a, a, a female in WoW, a female character, 
do you assume it's actually a woman or do you say to yourself I know that's a dude playing a chick you gotta ask yourself that like I was in a battleground once I used to do this series uh, with a buddy of mine called the Bull Rush, and we kind of did some low-level PvP and taped it, and we just had a good rap going between the two of us. And the funny thing is, is that I remember I was in a battleground, and we were at Blacksmith, and this female undead just started teabagging somebody that she was pissed off at that she killed at Blacksmith. And I'm thinking to myself, there's just no way that's a chick. <laughs> I just know it. You know, I, I think women just have a greater sense not to, like, rub it in like that. That's a guy thing to do, you know? I don't think that, that that's the female mentality. Women don't have this theory of kicking you when you're down. They really don't. And that's one of the great things about women. It is a long list, a long list of things that are great about women. But that's one thing about women. They really don't, generally speaking, of course, don't kick you when you're down. Guys, it's just like, forget it. <laughs> You know, they just rip you apart. Just like, you know, and your friends are probably even worse, you know? I mean, how many times have you been hanging out with your friends and you say something silly or you say something stupid and then all of a sudden, you know, they just keep ripping into you. Just rip into you and just don't stop because it's so funny. And, I, and I'm going to tell you guys a story. This is a true story. You're going to laugh at this. I was in college and I had a buddy of mine. His name is John. He was a few years older than me, and he was in the Air Force in his last year in the Air Force. And he used to come up to my college because there was a four to one or a five to one girl to guy ratio. And all the women loved sleeping with my friends because they didn't have to see them in the cafeteria the next day or in class or anywhere. And so he used to come up all the time. And he met this Japanese girl that he was crazy, crazy in love with. And he was driving me back to school after Christmas vacation. And then he was going to go to the airport to pick her up at the airport. And he was on the way. He had this Japanese-American, you know, book that he was learning how to greet her in Japanese when he got... He's, like, sitting there. He's trying to think, trying to talk Japanese. Kamichiwa. And he's, like, learning Japanese, almost getting in five or six different accidents because he's reading the book while he's driving. And, I mean, he was a great guy. I mean, he sent her, like, all kinds of gifts. FedExed her Christmas presents so she'd get them before Christmas or on Christmas. He called her every day. He just, he was the kind of guy that would just smother you. And the funny thing is, is that, you know, I got back to school. He went to the airport, picked her up. He was going to take her out to dinner in Manhattan, blah, 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 blah. He shows up a few hours later to my room and he looks like, you know, his puppy just got wrecked by a Mack truck. And I'm like, what's the matter, John? What happened? What happened? He's like, oh, he said, I don't want to talk about it. I says, well, what happened to, you know, the girl? You know, he's like, oh, she broke up with me. I'm like, are you kidding me? And he's like, no, no, she broke up with me. He says, I'm really upset. And my buddy Dennis was with me. He went to a school that was local, also local by me, going out with a girl at my school also. And he was hanging out. So, you know, it's... All three of us guys kind of grew up together and stuff, and we're like trying to find out what happened, and John won't tell us. And then finally, he tells us that she just broke up with him. She said that he was too smothering and just too much attention. She couldn't deal with it. And then finally, we're like, well, did she get you anything for Christmas? And he's like, yeah, she did. I says, well, what did she get you? He's like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I was like, come on, what did she get you for Christmas? We promise we won't make fun of you. What, what did she get you for Christmas, John? Tell us. He's like, you guys are going to... And he used to talk with this very slow Southern California drawl. Like, no, you guys are going to make fun of me if I tell you. You know, and I mean, he wasn't a stupid guy, but that's how he used to talk. He grew up in, in Southern California, very laid back guy, very good looking guy. Always attracted women, but couldn't keep them because he smothered them. So the fact is, well, we, after about maybe a half hour of this, he finally consents, and he pulls out this present that he got for Christmas. And it was a Godzilla electric shaver. And when you press it against your skin, it made a noise like Godzilla. I shit you not. That is the truth. <laughs> that is like one of the funniest memories from college, man. But that's my point. You know, guys in a good-natured way 
would rip into you and lash at you and continuously do that. But women aren't like that. They kind of respect when you're down, and I definitely respect that. But as you can see, um, this is a close one. In spite of the fact that we kind of had a little bit of an advantage, this has been a close one, but I was just wrecking everything inside. I pat myself on the back. I had a bad day, so I'm allowed to do that. But I hope you like it. If you did, please leave a like. Be great. It's like donating money, but you don't have to reach into your wallet. And of course, be sure you, you are subscribed to plan to give shit away soon. Anyway, this is Luxley saying, whatever it is by you, morning, afternoon, or night, be sure to make it great. Luxley out.